Hello beautiful souls and welcome to this beautiful tarot reading where we are going to go into what your soulmate would say to you and get to know a little bit more about what each of you guys present as in your light attributes and your shadow self as well as how you're going to show up in the context of life and then in this relationship and then we're going to go a little bit further into the tarot as to what we need to know about this relationship we are also going to be having an extended in this reading which i'm super excited about and we're going to be looking into a little bit about so what is bringing you guys closer and what is kind of keeping you guys apart as well as a timeline for how to bring you guys together sooner some things that you can do and then some things that are helping so what's bringing you guys together what's bringing you guys apart and how to speed up that timeline and what's slowing it down we're also going to get some more channeled messages from your person as to what they would say to you through music so yeah so first to start with the piles for pile one we have watermelon tourmaline for pile two we have the lace agate the blue lace agate it's very beautiful very soft stone for pile three we have an amethyst And for pile four, we have the Dalmatian Jasper. So if you would like, you can pause the video and meditate on these. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and jump into pile one. Thank you, guys. Hello, beautiful pile number ones, and welcome to your reading. I'm really excited about this. I'm not going to lie. I love this energy so much. Just like... <sighs> This, to me, feels like a breath of fresh air. It is like, you know whenever you meet someone and in the first moment that you speak, you feel like you can be real? It's like, okay, like sometimes it'll take a minute for you to get to that point. But like with this person, it's like whenever you get taken out of situations and like the time is right, and you feel all of a sudden just like, I can just open up right now. And like, that's going to be this kind of person. And it's like, it might be immediately, but like, it might be like, I'm also getting like, it might sometimes for some of you, depending on like where you guys meet, it might be like until you're actually alone with them instead of in the social situation, if it's in a social, so the social situation. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm sensing. Um, I feel like I feel like you're probably gonna meet in a social situation. There's also a very like naturey feel to the whole thing, especially with the um, yeah watermelon tourmaline. And to kind of go into like what this does, um, watermelon tourmaline. Here, let me get those some fuckers for y'all. Have you? Isn't it gorgeous? absolutely gorgeous watermelon tourmaline will soothe the heart it eases anger resentment and stress and it calms the mind and the emotions in terms of like how i felt towards them whenever i was channeling them it was like it was very summery warm and loving energy oh i saw a body of water as well with like free flowing emotions there's definitely a lot of like nature in this pile in my mind i feel like there's just a lot of like natural aspects that just kind of free flow in the relationship and like there's a lot of like composting kind of in the relationship like <laughs> you know how like you need healthy soil in order to make things grow and be lush and beautiful i feel like there's a lot of like learning how to alchemize in order to create that and like create a free flowing stream um at this moment, there's a heart blockage, though, that is keeping this connection apart, and that is an interesting thing for me to channel, because I immediately was able to feel like both of you guys are such good people, and such kind and loving people, 
but there's something from your past that is keeping you from opening up your heart again. And it's interesting because just today while I was channeling for myself, I was kind of looking into what keeps my heart from opening up. And I realized the difference between being guarded and setting boundaries. And what I found interesting about this is I realized that whenever you're guarded, you block off not only the good, but the bad energy too. I mean, no, sorry, not only the bad, but the good energy too. And whenever you block off the good energy, you can no longer, of course, receive positivity. But whenever you knock off the bad energy, there's nothing to alchemize into transmutation and therefore growth. And that leads you to the light. And I was just kind of like realizing that sometimes we have to step away from our past or or we really need to focus focus on it that way we can let it go and like for example like I'm not <laughs> I'm not just like oh this is easy like it's taken me years to set some things down on the table and move on and especially in terms of trust and opening up my heart I mean dude I'm doing a fucking 30 day like shadow work thing right now to help me with this very thing um I'm actually going to have a video on that if you want to check that out soon. It'll be out in like a month or so. Um, maybe that's something that you guys should do, actually. It's really interesting. Very strongly recommend it. It's a journaling every day about like the sources of where a lot of your mental patterns go through. I'll explain it a lot more in the video that I release. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like that's something that might help you right now. But... Just remember that whenever you open up your heart to divine love into yourself, you can then learn to receive and then you can let people in later on. But start with yourself and start with the universe and that'll teach you trust and then you can keep moving. Um, it's a long process. Um, I've been working on this for a very, very long time and of course it's not going to be solved in 30 days, but I think... I've been like going, going hard at heart healing for like, how long now? I know I started it about eight months ago for real. Like I like genuinely faced it after running from it for a really long time. And just now do I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm really able to open up to more than just myself in the divine. And I'm like, okay, well, I just want to just try it out. And... <laughs> Through doing that, I found people, a person, I suppose, that makes me very happy. And <laughs> I feel actually genuinely able to trust to open up my heart. And it took me a while to get there with him, but we are doing it. And the reason I'm saying all of this is because I feel like you can and you will. And it will be a beautiful time. <laughs> That was a very long-winded explanation of being guarded versus <laughs> boundaries. <laughs> but for your song, we have Never Undo by Morchiba. I love this song. This is actually my favorite band too. So very strongly recommend you check it out. <laughs> um, with the number one as well, um, this person wanted to be number one because for one, I feel like they want to be your number one. And, like, they want you to be their number one. And, like, that, <laughs> that's just how it is. Like, it's about you two as individuals, but also together. But there's a lot of individuality in this as well. I think also one is because it's, like, it's a completely new thing. Like, you've never experienced someone like this. This person is so special. And they're unique. And they're different. And they're kind. I'm getting a very, like, kind, soothing energy, too. I mean, in terms of the number one... I would just say, expect a fish out of a cup. It's giving me very much like <laughs> page of um, page of cups energy. Okay, so I have this little letter that they have written for you. Can you see it? I'll hold it up for you, just so you can get a wall. Oh, full go at it. Okay. <laughs> um. So what they said to you, so what they said to you was, Dear darling, 
You feel like honey, so sweet and filled with wisdom. Loving you is poetic, a beautiful mess at times in the material realm. <laughs> we are forever intertwined in love and light through the 5D. My passion for you will never burn out. It ignites and expires me. <laughs> it, expires, it inspires me. See, that's what I was saying about the composting. It ignites and expires me. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> You guys are going to laugh a lot together. I'm certainly picking that up. There's a lot of, like, fun, just kind of goofy energy, too. Um, when I see you again, I will love you unconditionally. I'm sorry time let us apart. I trust in divine time to unite us. I, th I think and dream of you. I wish you safe and incredible adventures and travels. You will find your light, and I'm so excited to share our passions again one day. P.S. You're a healer, too. <laughs> love the dancing willow. Okay. See, that's what I was saying about the heart healing. Um, I don't know if you felt that in your solar plexus and in your heart while I was saying that last paragraph because it made me really sad. Um, but I think because you guys are so individualist, indiv wow, because you guys are such individuals on your own, there will be times in this relationship where you're not going to be together. Um, and you just, you just have to learn from the world and take that time to be alone. And that doesn't mean that you're breaking up. It might in some of your relationships for a period of time, you might for others. It's just like, there will be weeks or months where one person's traveling and the other person's not one person's pursuing a career or taking time to just travel on their own or exploring something or just spending some nights alone in order to connect with themselves and I feel like that's something that's going to be really comfortable in this relationship is being able to take your time and that's why this person is still very close to you while you're doing that I think also like if you don't know this person yet they might like have this like feeling or like energy that like your life is shifting or that you are going to be like moving more or like going on a new journey and they might just be like wishing you the best um this could also be yeah well no <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry um yeah i'm um, also with them saying that you were a healer I remember that was like such a cute little moment and if you don't know you're a healer, let me just assure you that you are. Um, you definitely are. Um, and if you haven't discovered quite how you are yet, that is okay. However, know that you are. And whenever you want to unlock it, you're more than welcome to, darling. So, yeah. Also, the dancing willow. That was a really cute little sign-off. I'm interested to see if that'll show up in your life in some kind of interesting way. I realized, actually, after writing that, that that's the name of one of the, um, what is it called? It's an herbalist store. Why am I blanking on it? I don't even know. Anyway, darlings, I'm very excited because I shuffled quite a few oracle cards. And this side is person A, and this side is person B. And I have these oracle cards first to show me person A's light attributes. And then their shadow attributes. So this is kind of like how they present to the world and then like kind of the things that they hide um, from others and kind of from themselves too. And then for person B, we have their light attributes and like how they show to the world and then their darker attributes which would be abundance and heal the healer <laughs> person a for their light attributes they have mama cacao and rodenite um which is heart opening heightening sensitivity unifying and high on love so how person a presents to this world is very much a healer and a lover and someone who is just extremely in tune they might feel like an empath or just feel very like connected with other people almost as if they always like have a sense of how people are doing or how to help or um they just they're they really bring people together and they bring out the best in people and that's how they um 
present to the world. With cacao, I'm also thinking about how that used to be a form of currency and how it was very much so valued in the beginning of times of trade and stuff. Um, it's also just an amazing and very royal, I remember it was a very royal drink to have at the time because it was very expensive. And <laughs> I just, I remember there's something of high value and I think that that's how people perceive you is someone who's very, they just feel very lucky to know you and to be around your energy. Um, <laughs> now I see why. Part of your shadow attributes or something that you don't show as much, but you still of course embody, is the sword of truth, freedom, warrior of light, stop holding yourself back. And that is something <laughs> that you hide, but is very obvious about you, is that you make people face their truths. You open people's hearts and you bring them together, but you also bring them to their truth and sometimes people don't want to face that and that's why people might sometimes be a little afraid or not afraid but taken aback by your value and who you are and the way that you push people to be the best people that they can be and you stopped holding yourself back and that's what you're doing but also you teach people to stop holding themselves back and that they are also warriors of light and that they can be free too and as you embody that more and more, you're going to find this person and you're going to be closer with them. You're going to learn your own value and therefore see the value in the world and in other people more in turn. Which will be a huge transformational moment in this connection and in your life, honestly. Um, for them, in terms of their light attributes, so much wanted to come out, just like, it was just flying all over the place. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is insane. They have a lot of light attributes and they are incredible. But I told Spirit to choose one card and they chose Petalite with Cosmic Downloads, Higher Heart Healing, and See the Bigger Picture. And what I love about this is that there's like a path, kind of to these mountains, but more so to this crystal. And it almost looks like a heart to me. And what I love about this is that you're going into the depths of the forest, waiting for the flowers to bud, because they're little flowers, and then you're learning how to find the path to your heart and to the top and to almost like I'm feeling like conquering or like turning, like ascending to the king of cups kind of. Um, just like becoming your fullest, most embodied self. Um, and I think that that is how they present to the world, as someone who's found the path, someone who is actively able to take in cosmic downloads, and they're very spiritual, I'm feeling, um, even if they don't know it, they, <laughs> they're very capable of that. I think that they channel quite a bit, and um, as they talk, they channel, just like you do, I feel. and. Oh my god, this is incredible. This is definitely my spiritual file. The Cosmic Downloads. Okay, so as they talk, they bring in moments of truth for other people. And I think that whenever you guys are together, you're going to do that for each other a lot. And that's going to be absolutely insane. Oh, that's going to be incredible. Oh my god. I'm so excited for you guys. Oh my god, that's so incredible. Anyway. Higher heart healing, <laughs> see the bigger picture. Um, yeah, I feel like they're always looking to the present moment in order to make the best decisions for the future. But like they, they're always looking at everyone's perspective and trying to be the most kind and fair for everyone. Now, with those shadow attributes, we've got <laughs> Abundance and Heal the Healer, so Golden Topaz and Yellow Rose, with Raising Your Vibrations, Light Missions, and Reactivations, as well as Emerald and Milk Thistle, which is Soul's Truth, Atlantis, and Emerald Tablets. Okay, something that I'm already getting with this, with, oh, it's Raw, activa raw Activations. I was hearing reactivations which takes me back to I feel like there was a disconnect in 
spirituality or your truest selves or like your higher selves at some point or maybe like your soul's purpose or like what you felt like you should be doing or just like your heart oh yeah like we were talking about there was like a disconnect for a period of time and um you're learning how to reignite that and so are they like you're not alone in that they are definitely doing that too and they are learning how to raise their vibrations and what their light mission is i'm really feeling like they don't totally know even though it says abundance they're like okay well what is abundance to me and how do i get there like what does that mean for me notice they also have butterflies that's all about transformation and oh my god this this is just beautiful this is absolutely beautiful oh wait in the letter it said honey and you got a honeysuckle wait oh wait that was the other that's pile two isn't it okay sorry I always felt like those two were connected while I was setting this up, but <laughs> if you felt drawn to pile two, I do recommend checking it out. But <laughs> wait, was it? Oh no. Wait. One of honey. Oh my god. Never mind. Backtrack on all of that. I don't even know. Okay, wait. Backtrack on all of that. Yeah, but with abundance. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of transformation. And with the yellow roses, with yellow, I'm really seeing the solar plexus. So they're really learning how to express themselves. Yeah, they're learning how to express their soul truths. They might have had a, a past life in Atlantis, but I'm more so seeing that water energy again with that, where it's like that free flow of emotions. And emerald tablets, It's there's a lot of wisdom in each of those little tablets. And they're learning a lot about who they are. Um, with emerald, I'm also seeing that green energy again, which is very much heart energy. With heal the healer, I think that Oh, in their letter, they specifically said, P.S. You're a healer too. Part of the reason that they're coming in is because they are a healer and so are you. And now it's your time to heal each other. You know, okay, it's... There's a lot of healing that needs to be done as an individual and alone. But then there's some healing that's best done with a soul partner. And that's the kind of healing that's coming is soul healing after you've done it alone you get to do it in a partnership um and this isn't for everything that has to be healed but there there's going to be times in your relationship where you trigger each other but it's intentional it's sent by the universe and by the highest of love and divinity because it's pushing you guys to be each other's sort of truth and healers and love each other through the pain and through the hardship so it's really beautiful um now we have some more oracle cards talking about so we have how you present in normal life and how you'll show up in this relationship i found it interesting that black cat was in reverse number seven as well highly spiritual number definitely felt like noting that um but, oh yeah, with divination right there, which is 14, which is the double of seven. So that's like 77, pretty much. <laughs> okay, and then we also have 4114. That's, um, fucking <laughs> reflection. Um, no, mirroring. You guys might mirror each other in a lot of ways. You guys might have had a lot of similar past experiences, or you're going to have like healed a lot of things or oh, oh I love this whenever you have healed the things that they haven't quite healed yet that they need help with and they've healed the things that you need more guidance on and then you kind of mirror each other and like reflect like the parts that like each other kind of needs and it's, it's just perfect in that way you know and I love that with the way that you kind of present in normal life it's the veil and divination it's like I feel like sometimes you hide who you are and the fact that you are so divine and connected and intuitive you might even be an intuitive in terms of channeling and stuff for yourself there are tarot cards here there's scrying um it's either that or people see you as raising the veil and doing that divination depending on who you show and who you don't with the veil i'm getting kind of a mysterious mysterious aspect to it same with the black hat and that's how you're showing up and it's a curious 
kind of energy where it's like kind of stealthily but also very loyal and smooth and soft and even though you're mysterious and kind of standoffish at first, I feel like there's this kind of love that just can't be matched between you and this person. And the way that you're showing up is, you know, I'm here with you through and through. Like, I, I love you and I'm here for you. And I have all of this passion for you. And I'm not willing to be a black sheep. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, in other relationships anymore. But... What I'm also seeing is that you guys might both be like black sheep in your families or in social groups or in, you know, what you want to do in life and stuff. And you might show up and be like, hey, you're my other, you're, you're my pal, man. <laughs> like, you're the same. Um, so then for this person, that is way too much. Um, how they present to the world is greet the darkness and graveyard. And then, how they're going to show up in this relationship. Oh wait, as well as Pumpkin. Hold on, there's just too much. Okay, I have to start with how they're showing up outside, like on their own, and then do in their relationship, because so much came out. But, in terms of Greet the Darkness, Graveyard, and Pumpkin, what I'm seeing is... Actually, it's more like that. It's more like a progression. So... <sighs> Okay, here's how they show up to the world. Ego deaths. <laughs> oh, it's 18 and 19, yeah. So, um, yeah, they help people ascend. They are a healer. They cosmically download things. They, or you, depending on who, which side you resonate with, it doesn't really matter. Um, you bring people, you... Th Man, now I'm all messed up. They bring people to their truths and they basically ask you to, I'm thinking of like the yin yang sing, symbol where it's like there's just as much light as there is in dark and just as much dark as there is light. And that's what they're saying to do is to embrace the fact that there's always light and fun and curiosity in the dark so long as we let it be there's always something positive to get from it there's always alchemy to do and they present in that way where it's like they know the truth and they try and bring those but people who aren't willing to greet the darkness you you know it's like they're just not gonna i feel like you guys share this a lot honestly with the mirroring energy you guys you honestly might associate with both sides yeah because <laughs> you guys are actually like you guys might differ in a lot of ways, but at the core, like, your souls are very, very much in tune. So, even, like, differences that you have, it's like, well, I know who you are at the core, and, like, I love you. So, it doesn't, you know, like, they're just, some things are just, some things are just too big, you know? Or too, <laughs> yeah, too big for those small little petty things. Anyway, yeah, definitely some ascension energy here. Now, how they're showing up in this relationship. I'm going to do it like... Nope. Oh, I just realized I'm not allowed to have nudity on. <laughs> I like her little head poking up. Alright. So, how they show up in this relationship is third harvest and grief. I found this extremely interesting for many reasons. Third harvest made me think of the healing that you've gone through and there okay grief is because you have to release a lot of grief so there are going to be things that you've held on to that you haven't healed whenever you're with this person and they're going to say okay let's work on it and that leads you to this third harvest i feel like it should be switched around um, and they're asking you, plant those seeds, you know, don't be afraid to plant your seeds, don't be afraid to love, don't be afraid to trust, you know, I'm going to show you, it's going to be okay, like, we're going to get through this heart healing and we're going to do it together, and we're going to water this, you know, like cups, emotions, they're, they're water, it's water energy, and they're planting these seeds with you, they're grounding this love into the universe, and they're watering it with you, and that's what they're asking you to do, is let go of this grief, let's move on, and let's do 
do it together. Let's let this sadness be alchemized into love, into abundance, into the healing that leads to abundance. And they're doing this through the cosmic downloads. And you're doing it through the sword of truth. Um, oh, you definitely channel too. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you might be you might be your own soulmate, soulmate, <laughs> or you just found someone who's incredible. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Okay, gorgeous. Now we are going to do some tarot, which I am very excited about. Um, I feel very much so like <laughs> they're really excited <laughs> to be with you or to meet you. Um, and there are going to be some big plans that you guys make. I feel like some traveling. Um, there's just going to be a lot of fun. I feel like um, I feel like hiking is a big thing. Um, or like movement in some kind of way. You guys might like working out together. Or going on walks together. Or just like being on the water together. I don't really know. Like there are just so many things that you could enjoy doing. Um, but you guys are just going to love sharing the world together. Yeah. The, I just cut the deck and it's the nine of pentacles. That's, you know, wish fulfillment dreams and love being given out freely and grounding that energy and learning to stand in your own power and to create what you need to through your own skill. So now we are going to look into I'm going to just have Spirit tell me a little bit more about this connection in general. Just some things that we need to know. Spirit, please give me about four cards, four or five cards to tell me about this connection and about the relationship. And just things for me to know. Okay. Okay, so the Queen of Pentacles and the Hermit went flying. <laughs> um, okay, I want the yeah. I feel like that's wow. Okay, good to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, actually, well, okay. What order do I want this in? Okay. One or both of you are in a reverse Queen of Pentacles energy right now. <clears throat> and what that means is that you're having a hard time receiving. And there might be financial blockages that you're working through right now. Um, or finding your life paths. Um, you might be kind of discovering how to let in wealth or how to... Um, ooh, create wealth or how to create abundance or how to create the lifestyle that you want or um, just kind of like what your soul really wants you to do, um, how to ground into yourself, how to connect with yourself and how to not only feel safe and secure but to feel abundant and um, I feel like with each other you're really going to be able to work through a lot of your your blockages in terms of creation and money and you're going to be able to create a really beautiful and stable um, future for yourselves. Uh, with the King of Cups as the counterpart energy, I think that it's really interesting because what it's telling me is that not only are you guys extremely emotionally in tune, but you're also extremely in tune with the physical realm and you're able to I'm hearing as above so below and it's kind of what you project into the world is what you get out and you've kind of mastered that alchemy and that kind of magician energy and that's why you guys are such a great team I mean here with the two of cups we have divine counterparts right here this is absolutely beautiful this is someone who's not just here at random this is divine. This is who you've been waiting for. This is who's going to balance you out. This is who's going to be that black sheep with you. This is that beautiful soul that you've been waiting for. Someone who's done their own growth. And I think that it's interesting that the Eight of Swords in reverse is what's in the middle of this. It's what created this. It's the, the alchemy that brought these results outward. 
And the beautiful thing is that you're learning how to walk away. The Eight of Swords is all about your own fears and assumptions and um, the things holding you back. And you've optionally put yourself there and like tied yourself up and you are blindfolded. You can't see it. But the thing is, is that you know that you can walk away at any point. Whenever it's in reverse, it's that now you've recognized that you can walk away and you will. And with the hermit in reverse, it's like you've taken that journey or you are taking that journey and you're learning how to bring all of that information in and how to find that wisdom, how to grow, and then how to give it out to the world, how to alchemize it, how to bring it into the grounded, which is why it was in reverse, because you're finding out right now how to bring it out. You know, the hermit is um, an energy that's very wise and, and goes through these journeys alone and they have things lit up and I think that it goes that it's interesting that you go from being blindfolded to literally lighting the path in front of you in order to see what's happening and facing that light and that's kind of where you're going to be where you're at or where you've just come from and <clears throat> no matter what throughout this whole journey you're learning how to bring things into your life like knowledge love trust um, opportunities for exemplification karma and just good things and learning opportunities and then you're going to share them out with the world and whenever you're ready to share you're going to meet your king of cups i think that it's interesting or your queen of pentacles i mean honestly we all have male and female energy um in balance so it doesn't oh, we all have male and female energy in balance so it doesn't really matter you embody both anyway so <laughs> um, yeah I mean you could be female and be a king you could be male and be a queen honey because <laughs> you also a king and a queen at the same time okay anyway what was I going on sorry <laughs> one of you guys might not be um, this is like, this is more specific, but somebody might be like non-binary or they might not associate very much with their gender. They might have even transitioned at a certain point. I'm just feeling a very androgynous energy, <laughs> if I'm being frank. Because like it feels like there's so much fluidity, but more than that, that might not even be the case. It might be that you both are just so in tune with your male and female energy and embody it so well, where it's just like, okay, you know, my masculine and my feminine are in balance and we can embrace those together and in turn make each other stronger. And I feel like even if you're non-binary or going through that, you can obviously do that with someone because it's about energy, it's about the flow, it's not really about labels. It's, it's, I don't know if I can describe it that well. But, I just, I don't know, I just felt like I should put that out there. <laughs> I just, I've never understood why people are so weird. It's just energy, man, it's just people. Anyway, anyway, I don't know why that came up. <laughs> but this Two of Cups is so precious with the the lion right here I'm seeing the strength card and I feel like it took a lot of strength and inner perseverance for you guys to get to this point where you guys have both healed stepped into your powers ascended become counterparts for each other enough to be able to trust each other and to ground this relationship into reality and walk these paths together you guys have gone through so much as individuals that now you get to share it and you're going from this hermit and being alone to sharing it with the world and you get to share the world with this person now. And that's the beautiful thing. We see these two snakes intertwining and that's a sign of rebirth. That's a sign of... Um, it's also a medical symbol so there's a lot of security in this I'm feeling. Um, there's a lot of healing, of course, but there's the death and rebirth that's being reinforced right here. As well as with these wings, I'm really seeing like, you know, like those like red, like, well, I guess they would be like little demon creatures. Yeah, it's kind of reminding me of like the devil card, actually. And the reason I'm saying that is because the devil card is all about like choice and choosing to walk away similarly to the eight of wands um 
but like the eight of wands you're very aware or the eight of swords you're very aware that you these are your own internal thoughts whereas the 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 devil is more like you feel like your mind is being controlled and it's more of like an outward force and i feel like through this you've mastered learning the inward and the outward forces of kind of manipulation or past expectations or experiences or um, difficulties that you've gone through, lessons that you've had to learn, and you've transformed them into a being of strength and multi-purpose and able to, I mean, it's literally an alchemization of, <laughs> more like an amalgamation of two animals, um, making this awesome, interesting connection come together. And the thing that I like about the Roman numerals right here is like, I was saying in the beginning, with Pi 1, it just felt like you guys were such individuals, and with the number 2 being in Roman numerals like this, it's very much like 1 and 1, and then it's 2. And it feels very much like you guys are hitting each other. <sighs> yes. That's why you have to go through all this. You have to get to a point where you each have something very stable to hand each other, and to say, this is my offering to you. I will be here in the long term, and I will give you my heart. I will be vulnerable with you. I will share the world and I will share my love with you. I will share these experiences, these growth opportunities. I will share the hardship with you. I will walk with you through it all. And through any period of time, you guys can walk together so long as you choose. With the King of Cups, I want to go back to this because it's very much an intuitive being. And you have learned how to take the energy from the universe that's being offered, the lessons, the opportunities, and you've learned how to bring them in so much so that you know very well how to give advice, how to be kind, how to be fair, how to be compassionate of people. And that's what's bringing this in, is that you're so inviting and loving to the energies within and outward that now you have the opportunity to go through life and go through the waves of emotions with someone else. Now that you've learned how to swim like a fish in the ocean and through the waves, you can now invite someone else in. Same with them. They had to learn that. Then they had to learn how to bring that into the physical. It's like, okay, well now my emotions can be at a point where I respect where they are at and I see a bigger perspective from other people. How can I use that knowledge and that wisdom in order to help bring my physical life more stability and comfort and, um, ability to create. How do I create fertility in my life? Not only abundance, but the ability to create more. And that can be through just passion, through following things that you want to do. Ah, uh, I see. You have to be following your life path, kind of, to find this person, too. Like, they're honestly, okay, <laughs> you might think that you know what career you're going to do, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't think so. And then you're going to meet them, and you're like, oh, now I see a little bit more. And it's, oh, no. <laughs> but now it's like, okay, the reason I'm saying this is because you have to be in your, you have to be like in your energy, your authentic energy. And if you're at heart um, a healer and you become an accountant, you're not going to feel very fulfilled and through that you're going to meet someone, but you might not meet like your soulmate, you know? <laughs> Basically, what this person is going to be doing in this life is following their life path, and so will you. You're going to be following your passions, and if you don't, that's of course your choice. But there's very much an energy of like, even if one person doesn't, it's fated for you, you'll meet someone who's wonderful too. But this is definitely... Like, you are on your path embodying your authentic self. Like, this doesn't even have to be a career. This can just be, like, how you express yourself and what you do. And, you know, embracing your hobbies, embracing your true, like, emotions and your, your thoughts and your ideas. Um, I mean, yeah. As you embody that more, the more you will... 
be closer to finding each other. And I mean, you guys are already facing each other. There's just this in between. There's this, this heart block. And now I'm realizing that it's more mental. <laughs> You've mentally blocked in your heart. Um, but yeah, that's everything that I'm seeing for you guys. Um, I hope that this was helpful and wonderful. Hello beautiful pile number twos and welcome to your reading. You chose the blue lace agate which is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I absolutely love this stone. It is just so incredibly beautiful. I just, oh my god, I just love it so much. Um, the songs that are associated with your soulmate. Oh my god. I thought that this was really cute because it was Dead Crush by Alt-J, which was something that I listened to, like, way back when. I mean, it was, like, ages ago, honestly. So I feel like this is someone who you probably already know. It, like, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone way back. <laughs> like, or, like, it's someone who reminds you of your childhood or, like, nostalgia. Um, might even remind you of, like, a parent figure. I, there's also, like, I'm, like, hearing, like, the repetitive part of the songs. And there's some kind of, like, repetitive feeling or, like, some kind of knowing and the experience that you get with this person that's really comforting. And then there's also Los Angeles by St. Vincent that wanted to come out, which I thought was interesting, because they both mention L.A. Both songs mention L.A., and it got me thinking about, like, where you guys might meet or, like, what the situation would be, and it just, it really got me thinking about, like, being performative and, like, so... There are two ways that I'm interpreting that. One, you guys might be kind of performative for other people and be working on moving away from that or that's just like part of your personality and like, you know, yeah. But like being performative would also mean like in the context of like a career, if we were kind of like trying to look into that, I feel like it would be like something where you're like putting yourself out there quite a bit um, or like something... I don't know it's kind of like entertaining um so like maybe they're in the entertainment industry or maybe they like make some kind of content or something um they could be like a model or like a singer or someone who makes video I don't know like that so many things a voice actor actually that would be kind of dope um <laughs> a photographer even um I mean they could just work in technology but wait what was I Oh yeah, but it was just, I don't know, very performative. They might be like a sales marketer. Wow, this really isn't helping. I'm gonna just, yeah, but it's kind of a performative energy. I'm going on really random tangents. Um, that might be something that they do too. Um, so with the blue lace agate specifically, it's about deep heart healing and softness as well as gentle communication, thoughtful and caring energy. It's just, it's such like a soft love. And with blue, it definitely connects with the throat chakra. And I think that there's some communication that needs to be made in this. And we'll look into that more whenever we look at these oracle cards. Explaining what's um, bringing you together and what's keeping you apart at this time. But also with this energy, I was getting a very artistic energy. They felt very like well-traveled or like they will travel or like they've like looked into a lot of information about other places like I don't know they might be bilingual I don't know it just felt very like okay <laughs> like I don't know I really liked this energy it was very mm, charming I would say for sure but there's a very sweet heart it's not like it's not just like you know, it's just like so very sweet. It feels very cuddly. But they also feel like they're very attractive to a lot of people. And you might be as well. Probably. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But, <laughs> well, yes. Absolutely. Anyway. No, but they might be kind of like seductive or like, I don't know. There's just something about them that's like, People are just very attracted to them. 
I don't know, it's kind of goofy in its own fun way. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, they have a lot of niche interests and, like, little, like, bits of, like, not, I don't know, it's, like, funny. Because it's all this, like, I feel like they are interested in so many different things. Uh, they might fidget a lot, too, because I can't seem to stop fidgeting since I started recording this. Um, and it's, like, nothing is ever perfect, and it's, like, it all has to be... And it's just, it's just goofy too. I don't know. I find their energy very like chuckleable. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like whenever you're with them, you're gonna be like, you're kind of goofy. I like it, you know. <laughs> I get, I, I'm pretty goofy too, so it all really works out. You gotta find someone goofy to go with the goof. <laughs> anyway, it said um, a smile that lights up a room too. That was so true. I saw like this smile and like there was just like this light and it was more than a smile it was it was so divine it was like it was like love and light was shining through them it was just it was so beautiful um oh yeah the tear in the paper also made me think about the song uh love will tear us apart but even though it was messy we found a way around it which felt symbolic of some of the learning that will come from the obstacles that are faced together so yeah beautiful i'm now going to read the letter this is the tear that i was talking about it definitely like i love how it touched love and then it was like Okay, now let's heal from it. I just thought that was interesting. It says, Dear Beloved, Light with you became brighter, love. Oh, wait. <laughs> Light with you became brighter. Love with you goes deeper than I've ever known love. I am inspired by you every day. I see the white horse of the sun card with you. You illuminate truths and love in the world and people around you. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited to spend the rest of our lives growing and loving each other. Together. I'm so excited to spend the rest of our lives growing and loving together. It's only just begun, and together we will climb and move mountains. Please take care of yourself, my love. Your intuition will guide you. Feel the healing through your heart, not just your head. Love you endlessly. <laughs> and they signed it Boo the Bear, which I thought was just really cute. I feel like that was a very, like, cuddly energy. It just felt very bear-like, but that also might <laughs> somehow overlap in your relationship, which would be cute. But what I got from this is, like, such a caring energy like they really just want the best for you and like they are so sweet this is literally like an angel like I think that they might know a little bit about tarot or they're quite intuitive because they did mention like a tarot card in it um but I think that more than anything they're just observant and they know what the feeling of growing and rebirth is and they want that for you too and they're so thankful to know you or to be able to know you soon <laughs> or I mean this is just they really they really want to spend their lives with you and just to love you and it's incredible I mean it's just it's such beautiful energy I love this already so now, let's get into some oracle cards. So I have a person A, person B format here. So for these first oracle cards, oh, person A, person B. Let me explain this real quick. You can be either, um, but just one soulmate, the other soulmate, and yeah. So these first cards are going to be your light attributes, or person A's attributes, uh, their light and their shadow attributes. So for their light attributes, we had garnet and ladies mantle with womb healing, sexual power, and sovereignty. And for the shadow attributes, we have the empress tree, catalyst for change, clarity, freedom, and unbinding. Now for person B, their light attributes were Rewild. We have Amber, Amber and Dawn Redwood, 
with Rewild Druid Treekeeper Perception versus Reality. And for their shadow attributes, we have Mama Cacao and Rhodonite with Heart Opening, Heightened Sensitivity, Unifying, and High on Love. Hmm. Something that I am finding fascinating about here is like this person's like darker attributes or like their shadow attributes are the light attributes from person A in the first pile and I felt like those piles were connected so you might want to watch that if if you were drawn to that intuitively if not then that wouldn't apply for you but I don't know that's just interesting because I feel like their light attributes are what person A hides or it shows to the world and that's what they hide from the world is how open their heart really is um, yeah their shadow attributes are that they are so sensitive and I feel like they they hide it off a lot with high on love it's like there is so much love and you experience it and you you know of it but you don't let yourself feel it and fall into it and feel the abundance and feel the the value of letting yourself fall into love and letting yourself fall out of love whenever you need to and with amber and dawn redwood redwood with rewild what you show people is how to get out there how to be themselves and you show yourself how to get out there and you, what you like I feel like you're really going through a process right now of figuring out who you are and where you're going and you're learning how to come back into parts of yourself that you kind of let go of truths of yourself and um, passions I'm just I'm feeling a lot of passions I feel like with this um, kind of imagery it feels very much like you're laying in a forest and you look look up at the trees and you're looking into like the canopy and it's just beautiful and I feel like you have these daydreams and with this beautiful amber it's very much about you know the grounding energy in a lot of ways um, getting yourself more in balance with your expression and with your truest self with your fears with your roots with your love and re getting in touch that way you can open up your heart and you're learning how to find a home and branch out and it's really 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 beautiful I just want to say that that is so beautiful and with this person we have the Empress tree and the garnet and ladies mantle and what I'm seeing about this is like they're both to me very feminine like fertile abundant energies it's very much like attraction um, and there's just a very strong pull in this direction um, especially with catalyst for change clarity freedom unbinding unbinding that's really interesting what I'm thinking about this is if this was a past relationship there's gonna be unbinding and like freedom from um, a lack of movement and energy but otherwise I'm seeing that if you haven't met this person before they're gonna help unbind some of your past um, traumas or um, issues that you've gone through in relationships like especially like trust issues I'm hearing um, <laughs> trust me feel you girl <laughs> no um, <laughs> no but like seriously <laughs> with the empress tree being purple um going also okay hello to orange again it's feeling very much like solar plexus and sacral chakra energy all the way up to your third eye and your crown chakra and I feel like you're very much yeah you go from your roots all the way up I mean you're balanced you're in tune you're intuitive you are a master at creation and you are beautiful like it threw in and out I it's just insane 
the things that you can create through um, just spirit and through your own divinity and through your own love and kindness, it's beautiful and you're learning how to branch all the way out to the stars. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I'm very impressed and I hope that you show this more to the world or I feel like it's more so that you don't even realize that that's who you are. <laughs> Honey, you got to embrace yourself. <laughs> You're incredible. <laughs> okay, honey, with womb healing, we have sexual power and sovereignty. What I'm finding interesting about this is like, okay, I actually saw a video of birds kind of like this earlier. They're not like the same, but they were similar. And they were nesting in a palm tree. And it was just, it's really making me think of home. And I feel like whenever you're like in your mom's womb you feel the most at home I mean that's where everything began and it's where things felt safe you were protected at all times you know and I feel like there's some kind of feeling of home in that nostalgia where it's like yeah I also feel like you empower women or like people in their lives to step into their feminine energy and be more receptive. Um, there could also be healing in terms of certain things that have happened in your life um, that you're kind of able to alchemize into the world and that's really helped you gain a lot of perspective with people and be a kinder person and that's part of a root of how you behave and how you interact with the world so really really beautiful energy there um, next we have next we have for person A um, how they present to the world and then how they'll show up for this relationship um, a lot of cards going on here. Okay, um, so this is how they show up to the world at the moment. And what I'm seeing is that they haven't embraced themselves fully. They're preparing, or they... They might be going through a time where they're releasing a lot right now and they are learning about their own divinity and starting to find out more who they are and embrace it and they're going more into their passions. I feel like they're kind of going inward um, to discover who they are and how to express it outward. Um, yeah, that's really beautiful. In terms of, oh yeah, also... They're totally a witch, which is awesome. They're a healer. <laughs> um, they're, well, they... <laughs> they definitely, they might be an herbalist, actually. They might be some kind of healer of some kind. I'm just getting a very spiritual energy. They might just be really connected with spirit in some way. Um, they might be more, like, quiet people. Um, but yeah... That's what I'm getting there. But I got a lot of cards for how they're going to show up in the relationship. So I wanted to do those kind of separately. That way I had space for them. So, okay. Here's kind of how I want to set it up. I'm just going to... I'm just going to have which out. <laughs> Okay, so with <laughs> the how they're going to show up in this relationship is beautiful. We have broom, intuition, and transformation. And what I'm seeing with this is you're making space. 
by following your intuition, you're able to make this space that you need in order to bring this in. And through that, you create transformation and therefore the situation can move forward. Whatever was holding you back from meeting this person or whatever was keeping you from communicating, whatever was keeping you from admitting to yourself the changes that you need to make in order to bring divine love into your life, that is what's transforming for you, is that you are starting to listen to yourself and be more receptive, and that is therefore letting you alchemize and move things into new energy. So how you show up in this relationship is transformation of the self and you're able to then guide other people to follow their intuition and transform themselves, which is absolutely gorgeous. So now for this other person, how they present um, currently to the world is um, pumpkins. So they really help people see the light in things and they kind of have like a fun energy. They're just very sweet, but they're also a little, um, I'm getting the word like mystical. They feel very mystical to me, but also kind of like, they're not the most like bright and happy, funny go lucky kind of person. I'm getting a very like serious energy, but there's still a sense of like seeing the light in things and enjoying them and being funny. I just feel like it's like clouded right now. I feel like in reality they're just really you know but it's like it's like it's inside of them but it's like it's I don't know they're just not like letting it like shine it just feels a little tainted the song tainted love is coming to my mind <laughs> um, but who they are and how they're gonna show up in this relationship is the dark moon and a healer so <laughs> See, like I was saying, they are divine. It's just that they just don't see it, which is insane to me. I mean, how do you not see that kind of beauty? How do you not recognize how incredible you are? <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, no, they're amazing. They're like the best. Um, I mean, okay, so with Dark Moon, it says, in the dark, of your heart lives new breath waiting for you to release its ghost. What I'm seeing is dr dream fulfillment. And with the dark moon, it's like that's the new moon. And in that case, you're coming into something new. It's like this rebirth of something. And it's the rebirth of dreams and hopes. And that hope can simply just be to find love again. <laughs> like, it can be anything. And... It's just, you're, how they show up is that they completely embrace all of their darkness and they create light from it. And they look forward to the new cycle because then here we see there's a full moon around them. And that's whenever they're embodying their true selves. They're extremely intuitive. With the number 22, we have repetition, but that is also beautiful in terms of the fact that it's like building blocks. It's um, coming together. It's balance. It's duality. It's two energies that are then able to coexist. And, um... I'm seeing like bird feathers on this and I really feel like it's telling them to take a higher perspective and start looking at <laughs> looking at their true power and recognizing that everyone goes through hardship and that they're not the only one going through it, you know? And um <laughs> They just need a little bit more perspective on the fact that just because someone's life presents itself in a certain way doesn't mean that that's how it is and that they are enough and that they're doing beautiful things and that they don't need to compare themselves to anyone because they're beautiful the way that they are. And that of course applies to everyone, but I feel like that person just really needs to hear that right now. 
um, yeah. I feel like they're trying to, like, live up to some other expectation of who they think that they should be. And the thing is, is, like, honey, you're already incredible. Like, <laughs> you don't need to change. You don't need to pretend to be someone who you're not. Just be you. Just embrace who you are and embody that. You know, you have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy and holding yourself back from that <laughs> temperance, what was I saying? Um, alchemy. But yeah, you know how to balance yourself out. You, you're so powerful and beautiful and incredible and you know what's best for you. You're extremely intuitive and intelligent and you're going to be doing beautiful things in this life. So, just, I don't know, that's, <laughs> that's for everyone, really, just because, I don't know, I feel like we all need to hear that sometimes, because it's really just the truth, too. <laughs> it's hard seeing our worth, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's difficult, and I know that we all struggle with it. Not everyone, not everyone is as sure of themselves as they may seem. What the hell is going on? All of a sudden my nail hurts. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, should I? No. Hold on. Okay. Spirit, <laughs> let's chat. Um, wait, what are we looking at? Oh, right. <laughs> Spirit's like, Simone, are you shitting me? Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> anyway, Spirit, what do you, what do you want to say to me about this soul relationship, this soul companionship, this soul connection? Um... What was I saying in the last pile? A fucking fish out of water. <laughs> I feel like those piles totally connect. Fish out of water energy. Like, okay. <laughs> I should probably explain that. Um, there's a lot of, like... The Page of Cups is, like... <sighs> okay, so imagine you're being handed a cup of water. And... All of a sudden, a fish pops out of it, and you're like, okay, that's kind of an abnormal <laughs> cup of water. <laughs> um, and then you see the goofy guy who's holding it, and you're like, that's dreamy. Um, <laughs> that's kind of how this person is going to look to you. Um, they are funny, but in the way that you love. They're goofy, and they embrace themselves and in fun ways. And they're just, I don't know, I feel like they're so charming but also they're very much like I feel like there's the energy of like they didn't always fit in very well <laughs> they've kind of always been an oddball out but it's for the most beautiful reason and it's just because sometimes we don't fit in because we're too creative for that certain crowd and the right people need to find us and I feel like that's very much their energy where it's just like they're incredible they just you know socializing is kind of difficult <laughs> and you're gonna be like okay fish out of water energy that's that's my that's my honey muffin so <laughs> yeah um interesting so i'm going to shuffle this again now that that's out okay what the hell i don't like how this is shuffling i don't know Ooh, eight of cups that is interesting yeah, I definitely felt like this was a past connection, um, but, <laughs> sorry, um, you know, that makes sense. Actually, I'm curious if that'll come out again. Spirit, what do I need to know about this connection? Okay, <laughs> that, that's pretty sassy. They came down, like, right in my... Peacefully, which is the truth. Ooh, okay, two pages. Huh. Okay, bottom of the deck. Ooh, actually, it gets spicier. 
Okay, okay, okay. So with the Eight of Cups in reverse being the bottom of the deck energy, Bottom of the deck energy is kind of like what's underneath it all. <laughs> That's reminding me of the song Underneath It All by No Doubt. Um, okay, so this is like the overlying underneath energy. Like what is in between you two? Which is hilarious that I say that while looking at the magician in reverse and you guys are both being represented by pages. <laughs> You're in the process. You're learning. You're learning your trade right now. And... You're learning how to ask for what you want and how to receive what you desire. You're learning so much about who, you're learning so much about who you truly are and where you're going in life. And you're learning like your trades, you know? Um, this person's learning how to, well, you both are learning everything, of course, but at the same time, one of you is focusing more on passions and goals while the other person is focusing more on you know setting themselves up emotionally in order to be able to move forward into the next step and I think at all times we're always working on every realm you know because in the tarot there's uh, wands which is fire which is a lot about passion um, cups is water which is a lot about emotions um, pentacles is earth energy which is a lot about grounding ourselves and then we have swords which is air which is about thoughts and communication and of course we're always working on all of those but these are kind of your main energies right now that you're focusing on mastering and the Page of Cups is mastering, um, identifying more with themselves and coming into themselves and expressing themselves and embracing their oddness. Whereas the Page of Wands is like, okay, now how do I express that? You know, I know I'm a weird goose. Look at me go. And I'm going to dance with it. You know, like, I think you guys are both embracing your oddity and learning how to present it to the world. The thing about the magician in reverse is that you haven't fully embraced all of your potential and you're not walking away from what's no longer serving you and even if you're going back or coming into this relationship there are things from your past that you need to walk away from the past has to be left in the past and without that no new beginnings can start you cannot alchemize anything if you're not willing to dig deeper and with you not walking away, that means that you're just stagnant right now. And if you're not going to walk in any direction, then you're going to stay stuck. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of melancholic energy of like, oh, but you know, I could, but I just can't yet, and it's like, I don't know, it's just, but you can, you can fall out of love, you can fall back into love, you can move on, you can find your passions, you can proceed, you can also stay, but what you need to know is that what's going to bring you into this love is embracing yourself and then exploring yourself it's not at all about the other person for some time actually there's a lot of energy of knowing each other but needing to just move on yeah it's just like <sighs> you not moving on is preventing you from your own life right now yeah you gotta focus on you i want i want a clarifier for this magician in reverse spirit, please. I just feel like that would be best with a clarifier. Okay. Yes, what was I saying? Oh my god. So, yeah. So to clarify the magician, we have the six of cups, the five of cups in reverse, and the eight of pentacles. So what I love about this 
is 5, 6, 8, 8. So <laughs> there's clearly moving in like steps, but it kind of feels like you're going backwards to go forwards and that's creating a lot of abundance. And with the eight of pentacles, it's that you're not working to go towards anything anymore, whether to move on or to go towards them, which is keeping you stagnant and therefore you're not practicing and becoming I think that it's interesting that with the pages I really saw practicing because it's exactly what the Eight of Pentacles is. It's learning your trade and starting to perfect it. It's becoming a skilled person at it. And whenever it's in reverse, it's like you're not moving forward in it. You're not focusing in on it. And with the Five of Cups in reverse, it's very much that you see that there's more beyond your grief. But I feel like in some kind of way there's... just some energy around it that you just don't want to let go of. But So I guess tying back to the magician, it's that what you're trying to bring in is healing. But what you need to do to be able to do that is to walk in a direction. The thing about the Eight of Cups is that what you're leaving behind isn't necessarily bad. It's just not working. And it's okay for something to not work for right now, you know? Because you can always come back to it. But even if you don't, you knew this person and that was important. And if you don't know this person, it's that you need to walk away from a past situation or a past lesson and move forward in order to find this divine counterpart that's gonna be goofy with you and embrace themselves with you. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's what I'm seeing in terms of the tarot. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. I'm going to go move over to the extended now if you'd like to join me there to get an idea of when this connection is going to come in, a little bit about how you can help it come in and what the kind of resistance is right now, as well as more channeled messages from your person to see what they would say to you through music right now. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the extended. Bye bye. Hello beautiful pile number threes and welcome to your reading. I'm very excited about this. Um, I really liked doing these cards. So to start we have an energy check and we have um, what your, so we have a person A, person B format <laughs> and um, one of them is going to be like your soul and then the other one is going to be their soul and it's kind of interchangeable so it doesn't like the, whichever side that you resonate with is fine. You also might mirror each other. Um, so if you kind of sound like both, it's probably that. Or you could have also chosen a pile that you are your own soulmate. Um, it could also be like a friend or a family member or even an animal. Um, by the way, <laughs> these are very open. I mean, soulmates can be embodying or incarnated in any form. So, you know pretty marvelous. So we're going to get into it. I also have these cards for the extended reading um, and a letter to read that is a direct message from your soulmate. And so with these, it's going to be what's bringing you guys together and what's keeping you guys apart. And we're going to look at that in the extended as well as some music from them. And um, we're going to look into a little bit deeper with some tarot cards as well as to how you can bring the connection together. So, yeah, it's going to be very fun. Um, we're going to start with this beautiful amethyst um, in this letter. So with the amethyst, I really think about like going into new patterns and like new... It's just, it always feels like a fresh start to me. And like, I feel like there was a lot of... Um, like death and rebirth within this relationship um, or like things that you had to overcome before you can 
meet this person. Um, there's just a lot of like independence in this energy is what I'm feeling. Um, and like knowing yourself very well. And that takes a lot of courage to step into. Um, so I feel like you've, you both are very strong individuals for the song. We have moderation by Florence and the M machine. And the thing that I like about this song is one of the lines is you want me to love you in moderation. Do I look moderate to you? And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, I just, I think, I think that applies to a lot of, like, relationships, honestly, where that's, like, how you felt in the past, and at this time, like, you're gonna be able to fully experience what love really is, so that's kind of what I'm getting so far, I'm gonna put your little crystal right there, and we're gonna read this, so... It says, Dear sweet angel, just breathe. Take a moment to look around and ponder what you're grateful for. You'll begin to see the love and the light interwoven in all beings, things, and moments. You are so special. You will face many opportunities, challenges, and new beginnings in this life. You are growing so much as a soul in this life. I will always be proud of you. We will meet in the stars. We will meet so long as we both follow our soul's passion. Please don't be afraid to follow your dreams. The rewards... Wait, the rewards reach far further than only you and I, my love. Sweetest dreams, XOXO. I thought this one was so sweet. Like, most of what I got from this is, like, how much this person just cares about you so deeply and wants you to be your most authentic self. And I think that's a really beautiful energy to share between the two of you. So we're now going to get into the oracle cards and start with person A's light attributes and their shadow attributes. So their light attributes are uh, pixie helpers and green aventurine. Not all wanderers are lost, clearing the way, luck and opportunity. And then for their darker attributes, we have selenite and willow tree with goddess spiral, rites of passage, dreams and support. And then for person B, for their light attributes, we have um, Anandalite and Lemon Balm with integrating energies, awakening and transitioning. And then we had for their shadow attributes, we had Azurite and Orchid with Lyrian. Wait, Lyrian? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's a Stargate. <laughs> and it says personal power, healing entangle entanglements, and throat opening. Okay, the throat opening is making sense now because I was... Okay, so with the blue, we have a lot of throat chakra energy. So it's no wonder I'm stuttering and going all, all wackety-doo. But... <laughs> okay, something else that I was getting is like... This is like a lighter blue and they seem to bring a lot of light into life. Um... But there's, they also have this kind of like darker energy where, where they can be more serious and deep and um, kind of more of like a dreamer and be in the stars, um, but also like down at the bottom of the ocean and like discovering a lot about themselves. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like that's always within them though, because even in this more light image, we still have nice dark blues like that. And I feel like what they show the world is how to embrace the light and the dark and... Um, with healing entanglements being like one of their shadow attributes, I really feel like they have taken a lot of time to think about their past and through that they've had a lot of healing over time and they've had to step into their personal power. But I think a lot of people don't know what kind of journey that they've really been through. Um, I feel like people have seen a lot of transitions in their life, but they haven't really seen like what they've actually gone through and that's something that you're going to be able to share with them um and with you or them um with person a we have pixie helpers and green adventuring not all wanderers are lost with clearing the way luck and opportunity which i like this is your the light attribute Especially because I feel like what is being taught is how many paths there are for everyone and how we can choose so many different 
ways of expressing ourselves. And sometimes whenever we think that we're getting lost, we're actually going exactly where we need to go. And I feel like that's what you've learned is kind of how to play into life and how to have fun. And you've taught yourself and others that it's okay to have an imagination. It's okay to go off course. And I think that that's just a very upbeat energy and then with selenite and willow tree there's the goddess spiral with rites of passage dreams that support being your shadow and i feel like something that you don't show as much to like most of the world is actually how calm and down to earth you are sometimes i feel like you're more head in the clouds and exciting and kind of i think performative in some kind of way but like not necessarily like intentionally it's just that I feel like you don't embrace yourself fully and or like you're afraid of what people will think if you show yourself fully and therefore you kind of hide the the deeper aspects of yourself and I think that this person kind of does too but they let them out a little bit more but yeah I mean I really love this energy you're Shadow attributes is more so that like you're actually very calm and there's a, um, I think there's a level of like mysticism to you and sometimes people misinterpret it as being like quiet or like you might feel kind of misunderstood and I feel like this person's going to understand you really well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and then we have, um, how you show up to the world and then how you show up in this relationship for how you show up in this relationship or no, <laughs> for how you show up in regular life, you show up as rooted as a healer. Um, and then in this relationship, it's nature, spirits, and altar, and I'll go more into that. And then for this person, how they show up in normal life would be a bat, and how they show up in this relationship is candle magic and intuition. For how you show up to the world with rooted and healer, I feel like what this is saying is that you feel like someone who really knows the way and I feel like what you've learned is how to go with the flow more. You're learning how to go with the flow a little bit more and just kind of embrace what's happening and you're learning how to heal yourself. I feel like you may heal others as well. Um, I'm really getting a sense of like it's how you speak or how you just like live that really inspires people and I feel like you're learning how to like set your roots and kind of express who you are in more ways um but how you appear to other people is very much grounded and lovable and then um for your like shadow or no for how you show up in this relationship, we have nature, spirits, and altar. And the reason that I love this is because I feel like you're such like a, a mystical, wonderful, symbolic, interesting being. And it's like, you're more than just a human. You're like this whole soul and this really interesting, intri intricate energy. And I feel like you're very cherished in this and you feel so happy to cherish this person too and to be a part of a relationship with them. And I just feel like there's some kind of oddity that you're going to be able to share with them because you're showing up as a nature spirit and they're showing up as a bat, which is really interesting because bats are also kind of like kooky little spiritual creatures. I mean, to me, they feel very much like witchy and spiritual. And then we have candle magic over here, which I just, I find a really interesting combination in those. And with candle magic, we also have altar. So I feel like you guys really ignite each other and like you both bring out the best in each other and you'll be able to come together and really 
be a team with each other. For their darker attributes, we have Bat, and to me, that just feels very much like, like I said, like, they have this underlying side, and they don't tend to show people, and I feel like they just kind of, like, they come and go very quickly, because I would, like, the bats you don't tend to see them very much at all and I feel like it's just like they tend to be quite fleeting in life um yeah with intuition and candle magic being how they show up in this relationship I thought that was really interesting because I was like maybe they've been kind of like putting out intentions to the universe to find you maybe they even like use candle magic in order to kind of like see the future a little bit and they've kind of seen you and they're being guided to you um with the number 23 it might be in the year 2023 that you meet them or that you become closer with them or something of the sort um yeah i just feel like there's very much like a third eye energy here though I feel like you guys can really communicate with each other because we have oh yes mirroring right here because I mean okay this is a third eye and then this kind of looks like you have a third eye but like the crescent moon is a lot about intuition and um just kind of like following what you know so yeah I I'm definitely fascinated by how the tarot is going to communicate about this relationship because it's very interesting if I do say so myself I'm excited to do the extended I think that'll be I feel like that'll be juicy honestly because this is such a sweet connection there's so much encouragement and love within it okay and then so the tarot is just going to tell me a little bit more about this connection and just things to like know in general um i already gave her a pretty good shuffle before i started the video but i just feel like she needs more okay i'm gonna shuffle it one more time i just looked at the um microphone timer and it's at uh 555 five, five. so this i feel like this um is very much guided by angels and by okay five is a number of like change and kind of like it's like the climax of a story you know it's like between one and ten and in the, in the storyline that would be the climax of the story and I feel like it's gonna be right whenever things are like hit <laughs> shitting you know, hitting the fan right whenever things are hitting the fan all of a sudden this person is gonna like come into your life and be like ah oh, hello how are you doing darling you know <laughs> it's like or it's like right whenever you choose to move on and like you go into this new stage in life you're gonna meet them all of a sudden you're gonna be like oh my goodness this is insane how did I find you I don't mean to just like that so okay I'm gonna shuffle it one more time um and then we can get started on this darlings okay so Spirit, what would you like me to know about Pile of Three's connection? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> clearly they want me to know a lot. That's to say the least. But I don't... I only... Mm, are these their cards? Hold on. I know this one is, which is gorgeous. But let me just confirm that those are your cards. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> no. Because She's getting all sassy with me. <laughs> okay. What is going on? She has so much to say. Okay. Give me like two more cards just to tell me a little bit about this connection, please. Okay. Hmm. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see. Actually, I'm going to start by saying a lot of wands. Um, so there's clearly a lot of passion between the two of you. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys are going to have a lot of passion for each other. It's definitely going to be, I'm not going to lie, a little steamy, <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah. 
Interesting. We have the Six of Swords as the under the deck energy. Yes, this is what I was saying. It was right after five whenever you move on. Aha. That's beautiful. I love how that came through. Um, under that, we have the Page of Wands. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, 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 yes. That all makes sense. What I'm seeing about this underlying energy is that that is exactly what leads you to them. That moving on energy of choosing a better life and like choosing, okay, well, choosing, I feel like you're like standing up for yourself, you're moving on, you're moving somewhere, you're changing career paths, you're changing who you hang out with, like you're, you're doing some kind of shift in your life at this time where you're actively choosing to put yourself first or put your family first or put um, some kind of like betterment of yourself first and what that leads you to is the four of wands which is absolutely beautiful wait i feel like okay yeah okay here's the thing the energy that you are either in or were in or will be in at a certain point before you meet this person would be a very ten of wands energy and what i'm seeing with this is like you are just at your breaking point. Like, you are holding way too much. I mean, you're going from 10 to 6, which is, like, 5 and 5, which is, like, you're holding double the amount of weight that you really feel like you could do. You know, it's like, you got to take a step back in order to find where you're trying to go. And sometimes, or at some point during this time where you feel so over what you're doing and you feel like you're holding other people's weight you feel like you're holding too much at some point spirit is going to present you with an opportunity and or like the world is going to present you with some kind of opportunity and i feel like you're going to have to turn it down or you're presented with this once you let this go but the thing is is that you're blocking it right now because <laughs> right now or then because then we have the seven of wands in reverse and what i'm seeing with this is that you're at this point you've let go and you only have one wand and you're learning to fight against the things the extra things that were trying to hold you down or um keep you in the same place you're fighting against your own fears of moving up in life of your own um potential and you're learning to fight to realize that you have more power within you than you even realize and that fighting energy that movement energy that leads you right to this person. The Four of Wands is one of the happiest cards on the deck. Um, this can talk about like soulmates, um, of course, but also like sometimes twin flames. Take that as it resonates. Uh, don't get all caught up thinking that you have a twin flame and instead it's just like not a very healthy relationship because um, twin flames are kind of <laughs> messy. But <laughs> yeah, this person they're definitely very closely connected to you and they're going to bring a lot of happiness into your life. So this is everything that I'm seeing for the tarot portion of this reading. I'm going to now move over to the extended and we're going to look a little bit more into what is bringing you guys together, what is keeping you guys apart at the moment, some more channeled messages as well as some tarot on how to go into this next phase in your life and a little bit of advice as to kind of what energies will attract them at the moment so or like what energies will help kind of speed up the course of like destiny that way you can get to your fate um so yeah see you guys in the extended hello beautiful pile number fours and welcome to your reading i'm very excited to have you guys here today um this reading in particular I have to say, I'm pretty excited about um, this person is definitely your four life partner kind of energy. You know, it's like if you wanted to spend the rest of your life with someone like this is this is Johanna Bonnie Okay, um, like I love this person with a passion already. I love both of you guys um, and I think you guys are going to make an amazing couple. Um, 
I'm not getting like a friendship energy here. It's very much romantic in my opinion. Um, however, this could be a friendship, um, an animal, a job. It could really be anything. I'm really picking up a person, but you know, different strokes for different folks. So <laughs> yeah, um, you guys chose the Dalmatian Jasper, which is a lot about like playfulness and loyalty. Um, it's also about kind of being a little bit different from the pack and um, just embracing your uniqueness. So I really love this for you guys. And then for your song, we have Slow Down by Morchiba which is really sweet. I think this is a great song. And it really encompasses the way that you guys are going to interact with each other, where it's like, I feel like you guys are both pretty fast paced and you guys are really going to slow down with each other and go with the flow a little bit more. Um, really beautiful energy. So for your reading, do start with an energy check to make sure that this is your pile. I have some Oracle cards here and person A and person B format. And for these cards, it's going to show me your shadow and your light attributes. And then I have more Oracle cards that are going to go into how you show up in the world and then how you're going to show up in this relationship. I have this letter written by them. And then these Oracle cards right here are going to be in the extent and we are going to look into a little bit more as to what is going to bring you guys together and what's kind of keeping you guys apart. We're going to do more tarot on the extended as to what kind of the time frame is that you guys will meet and how you can kind of speed up that time and as well as like what's kind of slowing that time down. Um, we also have tarot on the main reading, which is going to just tell me a little bit more about your connection and things that we would like to know. Um, and in the extended, we are also going to get some final little songs as channel messages from your person um, and a spirit animal. However, your person already mentioned their spirit animal, so I'm just going to go further into their spirit animal in the extended, but I love that they already mentioned it. So let's go ahead and get into your reading. So for your letter, it says, Dear my little munchkin, you sweet angel, I love you to the ends of the earth. You are my little honey muffin and I can't wait to eat crumpets and frost with you. We are going to go everywhere in spirit and in the physical realm. Please don't be afraid to wait for me. I promise I'll come in divine time. We have this whole life and many others to be together. When you see a blue jay, that's me watching over you. I have a million jokes to make and words of love to share. I'll see you in the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Love, two rats sitting in a hot tub. So there were two things that I specifically picked up from this letter that I loved. One, they're, they're pretty goofy, um, and I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun together and just be able to crack a lot of jokes and enjoy each other's humor. Um, I also got that this person is going to take a little bit more time. Um, I feel like the world really wants you to be ready to be very committed at this time, whenever you're with this person, um, either committed to spending the rest of your life with them or just building a strong enough base to even get to that point um, and spend a long time with them. So you have to be in an energy of stability within yourself, enough so to where you feel ready to want to create something with other people. So it's a really, really beautiful energy that you're stepping into, but it is going to take a little bit of time. So now let's get into your oracle cards. This is person A and this is person B. So, for person A's light attributes, we had expansion with golden Libyan, Libyan tectite with uh, galactic activations, initiation in ancient Egypt. And then for their shadow attributes, we had crazy lace agate and sunflower with clay, more fun, jokes, and laughter, please. What I'm seeing for this person's light attributes with expansion is that they really push people to look into their origins, look into the light, and expand their mind view, their mind view, their worldview. Um, into a more well-rounded, encompassed perception of what reality is, what this earth is, and to keep taking steps towards the light and um, know that every path is going to be different, but every path is meaningful. Um, I feel like they also encourage people to really look into their origins and look into what is beneath the surface. I'm hearing the song Underneath It All by No Doubt. Um, <laughs> I really like that song. Also, um, with their shadow attributes being play, I feel like sometimes they're a little bit too... As much as they show people to expand, sometimes they're not always willing to look at the serious aspects of life, and they kind of run from that a little bit, and maybe they're just a little bit too <clears throat> playful. Not playful, but like, I feel like sometimes they forget to take life seriously. <clears throat> now my, <clears throat> my throat chakra got all messed up as I was talking about that, and I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like they have a hard time expressing themselves genuinely sometimes, and they hide who they truly are by kind of being more playful and playing into an idea of who they think that they should be rather than who they are, which is interesting because it's completely balanced by person B and their life and how they're going and their shadow attributes. So for their light attributes, we have show yourself with candle quartz and the bleeding heart, and then we have um, psychic gifts with labradorite and blue lotus flower, and that says wide stage awareness and call to action with the show yourself we have vulnerability self-worth and feminine healing and then for their shadow attributes i loved this because it was shadow mirror um, with obsidian and hellbore with deep healing understanding and seer what i'm seeing with obsidian especially is obsidian absorbs a lot of dark energy um obsidian like 
takes the dark energy and alchemizes it. And with Shadow Mirror, it's like, not only do they absorb it, they reflect it back, and they show the world that there is power in the darkness and in embracing the shadow of ourselves. Um, they, they're going to be very much like Queen of Wands energy, where it's like, I know who I am, I know my shadow, and I embrace my shadow, and I bring it into every decision, knowing where I'm coming from, and that makes me more powerful. And I feel like they've learned, or they will learn, how to embrace themselves fully, and that is one of their biggest strengths. However, I can also see that they take life a little too seriously sometimes, and that's where you guys are going to balance each other out, because they're going to be more of a grounding presence for person A, and person A is going to be more of a, you know, head in the clouds, having a little bit more fun energy for person B, and that is going to be extremely helpful in terms of helping you both just experience life in more of a well-rounded way, um, and I think it'll also give you guys a lot of perspective in terms of what life really can be like. Um, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you don't, there isn't like a full understanding of how incredible life can be, and this person is going to kind of blow you out of the water and be like, oh my goodness, actually life can be pretty incredible. <laughs> um, I'm also seeing that you guys can definitely connect in the spirit realm with psychic gifts over here, and with you with expansion, there's just a very spiritual energy, and I feel like you can actually tap into this energy at any time, like even though you guys haven't met yet, or even if you have, you can tap into their energy um, totally. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting energy and a balance to where you guys can be aware of each other and kind of use that to give each other advice and love and energy, and um, just like motivation, I think in some ways. I feel like there's a lot of like encouragement that happens over the 3D realm for you guys. For their light attributes being show yourself and a bleeding heart with vulnerability, I feel like what they really help people realize is how, like I was saying, the darkness or the, the harder aspects of life really can be alchemized into the light. And I feel like their light attribute is how much they've alchemized their experiences into light and they've used that in order to manifest things and in order to see the love and the light in life. I feel like there's a lot of yeah, because we're going from quartz to obsidian, which is kind of like the full range, and I feel like there's so much balance within this person, and that is one of the things that they've mastered that people really look up to from this person. Now, for how person A shows up in life, typically we have the veil, and then for how they're going to show up in this relationship, we have candle magic, and we have crystals and herbs. And then for person B, how they show up in normal life is reflection, and how they're going to show up in this relationship is potions and spells. <laughs> I love this energy. So one of the things that I particularly love about this candle magic card being how person A is going to show up in the relationship is they are really going to light the way in terms of the next steps and how things are going to go. I feel like there's also an air of manifestation in this. With crystals and herbs and candle magic, it's very much a healing and alchemic energy. I just feel like there's a lot of thought and contemplation that goes into this relationship. Because like with candle magic, before you do a candle spell, you have to think about what you want to bring in, what energy you want to work with. You have to think about what um, color the candle is going to be. You have to think about, you know, just who you want to work with. It, there, there's just so much that goes into it. And same with crystals and herbs. There's the time of study. There's the time of, you know, being energetically called to them. And then there's the time of actually working with them. And what I'm seeing with this is how much time and contemplation they're willing to put in. With potions and spells, too, I mean, it's literally the same thing. You guys are both putting in so much work and so much passion into this relationship whenever you're together. And I feel like that really goes into your normal life as well. You both are extremely powerful and loving and healing people to be around. Um, I'm definitely getting quite, like, a witchy energy and just kind of like a... I feel like you both are quite spiritual, even if you don't quite know that now, there's definitely a lot of power and spirit with you and around you. Um, with the veil for person A especially, it's like you are able to pull the veil back on a lot of things in life. However, with this play card, I'm also seeing that sometimes you can kind of put a veil over who you truly, truly are and kind of hide yourself and um, be more of a hidden energy. But whenever you lift that veil, you are extremely deep and full of love and expansion energy. And you just, you can really connect with people in a way that touches people very deeply, but you tend to hide that about yourself because you haven't quite learned how to utilize that. And I feel like there's a lot of like shyness within that is something that um, needs to kind of be worked on because to connect with this person, you guys are both going to have to be very much in your authentic selves. Um, with reflection as they, as how they show up in normal life, there's very much an air of reflecting back to people what they give out. <laughs> it's a, it feels very like karmic kind of, where it's like what they show to people is their authentic self. However, it's kind of flipped sometimes because, you know, whenever you lift like your right arm and you see your left in a mirror and it's like, what I'm getting with this is just a very like, this is the truth, but also look at it in a different perspective kind of energy. And I feel like you guys both do that a lot for people and to yourselves. Um, and I like that we have shadow mirror and then reflection again. And what I'm really seeing is they might pick up on what other people do a lot 
and kind of reflect it back to them, but also just like integrate it into their normal life. Like for instance, for me, whenever <laughs> whenever I'm around someone for like a period of time and I really like like the way that they speak or like certain things that they do or like little sayings that they have, I'll just kind of pick them up. Like I was around this one girl from Europe for a period of time that I started working with and I came home and I started talking with more of a European accent. My boyfriend was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. This is just, this is how I am now. Like <laughs> it was kind of funny. And I feel like that's something that maybe they do. Um, yeah, I feel like they're really trying to show themselves, but also sometimes they hide from who they are by doing funny little things like that. And like, sometimes it's not even very conscious, which is why they're such a reflective energy because they have to keep checking themselves. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful energy. Um, I think you guys are gonna be wonderful together and definitely create a lot of beautiful things. I'm seeing a lot of like co-creation with the earth between the two of you, especially. Um, hello darling. Yeah, I feel like there's just a lot of potential in this relationship specifically. Um, so with that being said, I suppose what I really want to ask Spirit is like, what is some of the potential that you guys have together in this relationship? What are some of the things that you guys can create together and do together? Um, is it going to be more like traveling or is it going to be more like settling down? Um, you know, is there just, what are, what are we trying to know, honey bunny? You know? <laughs> Um, I feel like I should shovel one more time, but don't worry, the spirit will tell me if I should leave. I'm not letting it happen. Forget it. Watch this. Watch this. All right. I am so excited for the extended on this one because I feel like there's definitely a lot that you guys can do to bring this together sooner and a lot of energy that can be alchemized. Okay, so <clears throat> we have these two cards. I feel like, no. Um, let's get like two more spirit as to what these people can create together. Okay. Clearly there's a lot, because so much just flew out of left field, um, all over the place. So, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm just going to reshuffle and see what, what we got here. Okay, so what can these souls create together? You want these? Okay, that's three, I can, you know, that's way more than three. Honey, honey, we cannot do this. Spirit is so sassy whenever I get out these giant cards, because they, they love these. Okay, I'm going to let that one, and then let's get one more spirit. Just, just one, okay. Aha, uh -huh. that makes so much sense. It's a really good choice. It's reminding me of the lover's card, honestly. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, this is making me very happy. Um, hold on. Two, three, four is what I'm seeing. Yeah, there are some stepping stones here. Um, that is two. As to what you guys can create together. <laughs> so, this is really beautiful. What I'm seeing is not only stability, but also being able to express yourselves fully in the context of this relationship. Um, I'm getting very like black sheep energy where it's like, I am not, I don't always feel like I fit in. Um, and trust me, I feel you on that. Um, but there's like this feeling of like not always knowing your place in the world. And with this person, you're gonna be like, oh my God, finally, I found the other freak to my geek, you know? Um, I don't know if you've seen the show Freaks and Geeks, that's what I'm referencing. But, <laughs> um, there's just like this, like, oh, I finally found you energy. The song finally found you by Morchiba also applies here. Um, yeah, I mean, okay. So the Page of Cups is very much like you were handed a cup in life and you don't expect a fish coming out of it. And I was like, there's a fish. And it's like, what, what do you mean? And it's kind of like this oddity of, you know, you've been asking for simple things and then finally you get the thing where it's like, oh, this is what I actually wanted. It's a little bit weird, but I certainly like it. Um, and I feel like you've been waiting for that kind of security and feeling stable in that energy of like, okay, now I can settle down. Now I can create wealth. I can come into a new stage and I can, you know, choose to work on love with this person but also prosperity what i'm also seeing with the three of pentacles right here is um i see like a child right here you guys might create a family but i'm also seeing a lot of teamwork this can be co-creating co with the earth to create some kind of um i mean you can birth a thousand things really um ideas uh passions emotional new beginnings you can birth a child you can um have a plot of land and grow food on it i mean you can do whatever you want but you can co-create with this person and you will create beautiful things um i'm seeing a lot of feeling like you're able to be independent, but also work with each other. And that's why there's that third energy too. Cause it's like, not only is it the two of you, but it's also the two of you together. And I feel like it's not necessarily that you complete each other. It's that together you become more. And that is the specialty of this energy is that you can do so much and create so much with this person because you're not just mending into each other. You are remaining as individuals and working as a team. And that is the beautiful thing. With the two of swords in reverse, what I'm loving about this is how much that you're following your intuition. With the Two of Swords, it's um, someone who's blindfolded and stuck between two choices. And they're not sure which way to go, so they're just kind of at a standstill. And with it in reverse, it's like you're choosing to move forward from that energy and choosing to move on from not following your intuition or... Um, basically, I feel like with this person, it's just going to be a very intuitive energy where you guys are going to be able to come together and make decisions more easily instead of whenever you were alone and you're no longer going to be kind of at a crossroads between what you want to do in life because you're like, oh, I can do so many things, you know, I don't have to be stuck to just this one path. And as I follow my intuition, I'll see that, you know, everything comes in divine time and I can do this for right now and six months from now, then do that. And I can do this with this person and I can do it as an individual and I can continue to progress. We're going two, three, four. There's a lot of progression in this. There are 
ascensions that you'll have with this person too, especially if you're spiritual. I feel like you're going to have a lot of spiritual ascensions with this person. And I mean, yeah, and then we go to the Page of Cups, and it can only go up from there, really. So <laughs> what I love about this as well is that there's a grounded energy, there's an emotional energy, which is the most ascended energy, and then there's also a thoughtful energy, and it's the, the energy of moving on. And I feel like you're no longer holding yourself back from your fears and from your worries, and just like your general doubts about life, and that is part of why you guys are so beautiful together, is because you've given up on holding yourself back by your own thoughts. And something that I do want to note here, though, is with the Four of Pentacles, there is a bit of like a a staying energy. And I think that you guys can ascend a lot more together, but there will be times whenever you stay in place. What I am seeing with this at the same time, though, is this is a long-lasting energy. This person is going to be in your life for a long time. They are not just going anywhere, okay? Like, they are staying with you, and they want to be with you. And so long as you guys are willing to work together and be filled with love and do your actions from a place of love, you will be together for a long, long time and create some really beautiful things. So that is everything that I'm seeing for this portion of the reading. I am now going to go over to, I'm now going to go over to the extended, and we're going to look a little bit more into what is going to bring you guys together, what is keeping you guys apart, and what you can do to help bring this connection together sooner, as well as some channeled messages through music. So, I hope that you enjoyed this reading, and I hope to see you in the extended or in my next reading. Have a nice one, guys. Bye-bye.